Today's episode is brought to you by Progressive, where drivers who save by switching save nearly $750 on average. Quote now at Progressive.com. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and Affiliates. National average 12-month savings of $744 by new customers surveyed who saved with Progressive between June 2022 and May 2023. Potential savings will vary. Thanks for supporting the Fable and Folly Network. Here's another show we know you'll love. Where am I? Welcome to Desert Skies, Traveler. Your journey through the physical plane has come to an end. I am the attendant. My colleague here is the mechanic. Yo! This is your last stop on your way to the great beyond. It's our job to make sure you're prepared for the ride. Now, before hitting the road, we have an impressive selection of over 34 varieties of microwavable burritos. Um, what, what? What's going on? There's got to be a better afterlife than this. I mean, come on! Uh, that's offensive. Something seems to be wrong with me. You left something major undone. I have a life outside of this gas station, you know. You quite literally do not. Any hobbies? Nope. Ever travel? Nope. Love interests? Are you kidding? Oh my god. You're like the human version of a plain bagel. Cash register. How can I help you, attendant? Play some music? You got it. It's kind of funny, though. What I needed wasn't back there. It was here, waiting for me. I wonder what it feels like, Mac, to miss the physical plane, the people you left behind. You know, I had a wife who died three years ago. Wish I could go back. No, you don't need to go back. You just need to be here. And a new traveler approaches. Ready, team? Ready. Good. Let's do this. Find Desert Skies wherever you listen to podcasts. The four elementals are not doing well. Hiram Blood was murdered. Eugene and Angus were tied up by the blowhole gang, and Marianne has serious writer's block. I know we didn't really discuss that, but it's true. But Eugene and Angus's predicament is our utmost concern, as they're tied up and at the mercy of Pirate Penny. Her heels clicked on the cement floor as several of her goons tend to a bucket of jellyfish. (laughs) Right, sure, but what you didn't realize, Angus, was that I can't understand you with that gag in your mouth. Silence! I see you perfectly fell for my trap. Perfect? Aw. Too bad you won't live long enough to enjoy it. Question. Yes? Are you actually Henry B. Lubbins? Let me finish. The third... How I shall delight in your death. Notice she didn't say no. I think this mystery is wrapping itself up. (laughs) Retrieve the jellyfish. All right. Just uh, put on this here glove and fish the fella out. Come here, little buddy. Come here, little buddy. I won't hurt you. Come on. And got him. Behold, the sea wasp. Delicate little thing, but with quite the sting. Oh, that rhymes. This little piece of goo is capable of killing 60 men in three minutes. Is that 20 per minute or all at once? Ah, your death will be the sweetest of all. Maybe it's three men over five and then carry the one and... Oh, wait, help, help. I I, I, I don't want to die. I haven't tried kale yet. I'd love to stay and watch you scream. I have pressing business. The land whale awaits. No mercy, boys. Oh, I'm gonna enjoy this. Any last requests? Don't kill us? Oh. Oh. Uh, hey. Hey, Terry? Are we gonna honor that request? Well, that's a moral quandary. Huh. Yeah, it's a real pickle. Huh. Uh, All right, here's what we're gonna do. We're going to take a straw poll. Everyone gets a vote, even the jellyfish. No? Okay. Not the jellyfish, everyone else. All those in favor of honoring that request? And all those opposed? Hmm. Even split, 3-3. Three, three. Well, once again, voting solved nothing. What else we got? Okay, okay. Tell you what. Let's ice them, 
Then go ask Father McGillicuddy and his fancy Bible what he thinks. Works for me. Now to jelly these joiks. <laughs> help, help. <laughs> the goons moved in, holding out the deadly jellyfish. But just as all hope seemed lost... Oh, someone shot a marble in my non-patched eye! <gasps> but who? But who? Me. A man leaps from the shadows. He wields a large wooden staff. He's masked and wearing a pajama-like costume. He smiles a gap-toothed grin. Stand down, villain. Your criminality is at an end point. <laughs> the fuck? Uh, I second my chum's query. As evil grows, so does good. This city screams for a hero, and I answer the call. I am the big stick. <laughs> The big nutter is what you are. Nuts to your nuts! No! Oh, my sea beans! Get that no good do gooder! Take that, you mongrel! That's not a no match for me! Take that! Got him! That's another one! He's got them all! With villainy now dispatched, I twirl my stick in celebration! <laughs> ow! 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 <laughs> uh, uh, oh, <laughs> meant to do that. <sighs> no need to fear me, citizens. I know good eggs when I see them. <laughs> but be warned. Oh. Don't interrupt, blackguard! <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> uh, where was I? <clears throat> no need to fear me, citizens. Oh. I... Uh, <clears throat> Ugh, ugh, stupid idiot! What is wrong with you? Oh, sorry, where were we? Again, no need to fear, citizens, good eggs, etc., etc., but be warned, fishmonger, your reign of evil shall end at the end of the big stick's big end. I think I need to re- And with that, the big stick used his stick to untie Andrus and Eugene, which took longer than untying them regularly, but they were just relieved and excited to meet New York's first and only superhero. You're incredible. The way you knocked those numbskulls? Right, thanks, but I don't think there's such a thing as the fishmonger. Phooey, he's my arch nemesis. Don't be fooled. He's as deadly as three-day-old deviled eggs. They were supposed to be thrown out! Oh, uh, yes, um, can, can you stop hugging me? Your costume is so soft. Thank you, yes. Um, oh. Mm. Let me, uh, use my stick to pry you off. And there! Oh, oh, you got a stain on it. I should have some bicarbonate powder in my stickility belt. Let me see if I can get to it. But no thanks steps. to you, Angus. I, I can explain. Don't. I have it all figured out. You're behind all of this. You're Pirate Penny. What? It was quite the plan. Kidnapping yourself. If you'd killed yourself, it'd have been perfect, but... Eugene. Yes? There's no way I could be Pirate Penny. First off, she doesn't have a prosthetic hand, like me. There's ways around that... Second, I could never run a gang. I have terrible organizational skills. True. I remember that surprise party. We promise never to speak of that. Um, anyway. Lastly, you saw her and me together. At the same time. She's got you there. <laughs> oh, sorry. But, but that note, you said, it's not a treat to be tricked, Angus. I, I had to, to protect them. Who? I have a horrible secret. You're Pirate Penny. No. No, 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 it's much deeper. And I can only achieve sexual and emotional fulfillment from plants. I don't understand. I thrill to chlorophyll. I get relief from a leaf. I pine for pine, I heater to cedar, I burn for a fern. Acornography is my... Oh, I see. Wait, I, I don't get it. I'm a florisexual. Somehow Pirate Penny knew my weakness. She made me write that note. She must be after Marianne next. What time is it? Almost 8 a.m. This late night rumble turned into an early morning tumble. She has that breakfast reading at the Salma Goodney Club. We'd never make it in time. Not to mention at this hour, the West Village streets are full of the Portuguese, and I have that deep fear of the Portuguese. Don't worry, my slightly xenophobic friend. No Iberian strikes fear into the big stick. I'll save your friend from the fishy fingers of the fishmonger. Pirate Penny, not the... You don't need to thank me. I was <laughs> correcting you. You're welcome. But now I go. Big stick, big exit. Do I disgust you, 
Eugene. Why? Oh, because of the whole tree, tree and the... No, and more confused. But it doesn't change anything. You're, you're my friend. My uh, compatriot. Some people even consider me unusual. Me? Good old Eugene. But you... Oh, you're still all cream in my coffee book. Thank you. Water under the... But, but if you're not Pirate Penny, then of course... Henry B. Lubbins, the third. Pirate Penny hates Lubbins. I overheard them talking about Project Land Whale. Land Whale? What's that? Sounded like some sort of weapon. They'll probably use it against big whale oil. We should warn Lubbins, but... But what? But what? He scares me a lot, and he's also a top-shelf jerk. The shelf level of his jerkitude doesn't matter if he's in trouble. It's our scientific duty to warn him, and maybe he can help us. You're right, for science. To the financial district. We're already in the financial district. Oh, I thought this was Tribeca. What's that? The triangle below Canal Street. I like to come up with little names for areas in the city. Noho, UWS, Fidei, Iha, Mugu, Mito, and Difro to Wa Square R up to Mass Square Pa. Difro to Wa Square... Difro to Wa Square R up to Mass Square Pa. Difro to Wa Square up to Masquapa. Direct from the Washington Square Arch up to Madison Square Park. Difro to Wa Square up to Masquapa. That is a bustling name. Ain't no soiree like a Difro to Wa Square R up to Mass Square Pa soiree because a Difro to Wa Square R up to Mass Square Pa soiree never stops. Uh... Let's just get to the Blubberton office. Start the Fable and Folly Network supports creators of exceptional audio stories, including the one you're listening to right now. If you love our shows, we want to hear from you. Complete our listener survey at fableandfolly.com survey. This will help us learn more about you, what you like, what you'd like to hear more of, and how we can maintain an inclusive, safe atmosphere. As a thank you for your participation, we have extras and behind-the-scenes content from your favorite shows. Fans make the network what it is. Thanks for listening, and we can't wait to hear from you. Find our listener survey at fableandfolly.com slash survey today. Looking to get out of the ads and back to the story? Fable and Folly Plus is a new way to support the creators you love. The podcast you're listening to right now and more than 60 others can be heard ad-free for as little as $4 a month by visiting fableandfolly.com slash plus. And now you'll start to see Fable and Folly Network shows are offering bonus content to all existing and new supporters. Find exclusive new episodes from shows like Civilized and Realms of Peril and Glory. Fable and Folly Plus. Sign up today at fableandfolly.com slash plus. And with that, they hurried over to Blubberton. Eugene further explained exactly where Tribeca was located, and that it was more a trapezoid than a triangle, but Tribeca didn't have the same ring to it. Eugene and Angie slipped into Lubbin's office. The whale oil lamps burned low, and its windowless, dark wood interior felt spookier than usual. It's dark. Like a robber baron's soul. Hey, not all robber barons. My brother Pugene is a lumber baron. You have a brother named Pugene. Yeah, I... Yipes, there he is. Oh, he's being all tough with his chair turned away, staring at that giant sperm whale head. I bet he's waiting to spin around and scream at us. He loves screaming. This is no time for a game of spinny screamy. Lubbins, we think someone is trying to kill you. He must really be saving his vocal cords for a barbaric yawp. Lubbins, this is serious. Let me just go and spin him around. (gasps) Oh, bird turds! The chair spins, and there sits Lubbins. An octopus wrapped around his face. It has choked him to death. Is that octopus? He's been octopused. Is he dead? Eugene peeled the octopus away, revealing Lubbin's purple face frozen in the fear of death by tentacle terror. Very dead. Oh, this is bad. Well, yes, but maybe, um, maybe, (gasps) aha, maybe he killed Hiram and the guilt ate him up inside until he committed suicide by cephalopod and we just both dreamed the whole pirate penny thing and we're all safe and sound and everything is peaches. There's a note. When one strikes the sea, the land whale calls for thee. Signed, P.P. P.P. Peter Piper. Damn him and his delightfully picante pickled peppers. Pirate Penny. Right, that makes more sense. I mean, pickled peppers are... Oh! 
What's happened? I... Oh. Murderers. You murdered him! No, shh. Shut, Security! Shut Security! up that mouth of... Security! There's a good explanation for... Turn to the coppers. I'll see you both hanged. Hoppins was a saint. Saint? Really? I, I mean, I don't want to speak ill of the dead, but, um... Um, Eugene, let's run. No, no, we need to straighten this out. You see... Assassins! Ellis, how dare... We... <gasps> no. Murderers. You did this. You did it, this. No, it's... You killed him. Ellis, Arthur, we... He no. gave to his community. Karate. <gasps> oh, my bread basket. It's been chopped karate style. Just then, the giant sperm whale's mouth opened and several security guards rushed in. It's them. The obvious murderers. Run? Run. Run. And with that, Eugene and Angus ran. Meanwhile, outside workers were carrying a very large vase under the guidance of an art dealer. That's it, that's it. Carry that very delicate vase across this bumpy street. You got it, boss. Hustle up, hustle up, keep moving. At that moment, Eugene and Angus burst from the Blubberton building and down the street as they were chased by the security guards. Luckily, they completely missed the vase. That commotion left the scything vase unscathed. Oh, but I needed it to break for my insurance scheme to work. Oh, I hate those no-vase smashing runners. Get them! Hey, boss, should we be chasing them while carrying the vase? Yes, quickly! <laughs> and thus, the art dealer and vase handlers gave chase. Eugene and Angus had already turned down another street where they bumped into some Bowery boys. <laughs> Sorry! Quick, this way! No one bumps a Bowery boy! Let's rough tumble these lollyboglers! The Bowery boys pulled out various stabbing knives and joined the chase, which now went past the Financial District Police Station. Captain, it's the Bowery boys. They're going to beat up those two weirdies. Beating up weirdies is our job. Get him! And so the police joined the chase. Angus and Eugene quickly cut down Bowling Green and passed the customs house where the port collector and bicycle baron, George Bidwell, was about to mount his newly designed safety bicycle. (laughs) Sorry! How dare you! Wheelmen, hop on your cycles and avenge me! Paddle, boys! Let's show that horn swaggler. And with that, Bidwell's bicycling lackeys joined the ever-larger mob chasing after Eugene and Angus. One of the bikers got in close, but Eugene and Angus managed to run down a side street and right into the outdoor fruit and vegetable market, where they crashed into a stack of potatoes. Oh, potatoes! Oh, oh, just plow through the potato pile. Ah, nerds! I'm slipping on these tails! A couple Bowery boys crashed out on the spuds, which were now all over the pavement, but the rest of the mob was still hot on Eugene and Angus's heels. They're all gaining on us. Grab some of those apples. Now what? Toss them. Eugene and Angus tossed apples behind them. Eugene also grabbed a banana, but he didn't want to toss it, so he pocketed it, but he was fine with tossing apples. One Granny Smith hit a group of angry doctors who were also chasing them for reasons I have not been able to figure out, but chase them they did. Mm. This apple a day is keeping me away. But this didn't go over well with the apple merchants. Those are eating apples, not tossing apples. Get them, Grunk. Grunk? Mad! Grunk kicked apples. No make mockery of mercantile process. And thus, the hulking apple-slinging brute Grunk lumbered toward them, swinging his giant fists. Quick, cut down Meat Vendor Alley. This way. And they did, but soon... Shapes I'm tangled up in all the dangling sausages. What are you doing? Oh, those are my tube steaks. Get a manga. Bingo grind bones and fat all day, make yum yum. Maybe if we head down. Eep. The hulking brute at Minga grabbed Eugene. Grunk caught dibs on puny man. Give Grunk. No, is Minga. They're both pulling me apart. I need to help Eugene. This suckling pig will make one heck of a club. It's a little floppy. And with that, Angus grabbed a whole suckling pig and bashed first Grunk and then Minga. The shock of being sought by a roasted pig caused them to drop Eugene, who used the large, soaked street to slide over to Angus. With that, they continued running as the rest of the angry mob continued the chase. This why no one like Grunk? Minga like Grunk. Uh, uh, maybe Minga won't go out with Grunk? Out where? Uh, 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 La Traviata at Opera House. Grunk is season ticket holder. Eventually, they got married, and their son became a senator. But enough about them. Angus and Eugene were losing pace against the angry mob. <sighs> oh, I gotta lighten the load. This pig is really slowing me down. Get out of here! Oh, I bet that's a lot lighter. It'd be even lighter if I weren't giving you a piggyback ride. <sighs> 
The tossed pig, meanwhile, landed right in front of a group of rabbis. Oh, what an insult, this pig! We must give chase. But as Rabbi Akiva but said... As the town and they began to argue and did not join in the chase. But the Bowery Boy, security guards, art insurance scammer, workers, vendors, merchants, police, bicyclists, doctors, and others were all still heading toward Eugene and Angus. The mob had split and were now closing in from all sides. From every street, the angry throngs of New Yorkers closed in. They were cornered. We're cornered! Quick, that building. What's that sign say? Probably a historic plaque about George Washington sleeping there. No time to read it. Get inside. But had they read the sign, they'd have learned this was a condemned building and very unstable. Always read signs. Always. Also, George Washington had spent the night there, but he loved barging into people's houses and sleeping in their beds. Until one time he did it to a family of bears, and that started the Shays' Rebellion. But that's for another time. The pissed-off groups all ran in different directions, not noticing that the source of their ire had vanished. Eventually, they all tired and went back to being mad at something else. Meanwhile, inside the condemned building, Eugene and Angus tried to recoup and regroup. Oh, that was close. Yeah, definitely too close. It's dark in here. Here, let me light this candle. Um, Eugene? Yes? That's not a candle. That's a stick of dynamite. Damn you, Alfred Nobel, you've once again bested me. Oh, I'll dunk it in this barrel of water. Oh, that's not water, that's fire. What the bollywick? It's spreading. And also, throw that dynamite! Oh, right, the mite. <laughs> that was a load-bearing wall, I bet. The only clear path is upstairs. Quick! And with that, they ran up to the top floor. But there's no way out. We're doomed. Wait, look! It's the firemen! Oh, we're saved. Oh, and another fire company. Hey, Mac! What are you doing here? This is awesome! Whoa, 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 whoa. Check his own map out. This is FD Ladder 12 territory. Up your alley! It's Lower East 7th patch. Why, I wanna... They're just fighting each other. I guess they're less firefighters and more firefighter fighters. Ha <laughs> ha! Roasted them. Yeah, but now we're going to be roasted for real. I always knew I'd die in a fire, but I always hoped it would be in a nicer building surrounded by children. There's so many plants I have fun. Well, goodbye, Eugene. Goodbye, Angus. The Landwell Murders is a Roy Gold production. It was written by Jonathan A. Goldberg with music by Matt Roy Berger. It was directed by James Oliva and mixed by Martin D. Fowler. Please leave a rating on iTunes or wherever they let you rate podcasts. Five stars, please! For as the legend states, the one who leaves stars of five shall always have delight in their lives. That's totally a real legend. Definitely. Wait, is that a legend or a prophecy? Or a saying? An adage? <laughs> anyway, keep on burning and always cormorant before an albatross. The Fable and Folly Network, where fiction producers flourish. All right, just like rehearsal, just put on this here glove and then what was next? Put on this here glove, and then, uh... Hey, hey, boss, what? No, never mind, I... Uh, hey, hey, boss, what comes... You know what? Never mind, I think I got it. Uh, uh, put on this here glove, and fish the fella out. Um... Do I, do I still say fish the fella out when it's... Uh, jellyfish the fella out. Let, yeah, put on the glove, jellyfish the fella... I'm overthinking this. Here we go. All right, come here, buddy. Uh, I'd say I'm not gonna hurt you, but, um, this might. I don't know. Uh, hey, I got him. <laughs>